What's going on there, YouTube? Uh, part three on the TAO2 short wheelbase build. Um, I've already skipped the step and went ahead and built the shocks. That this doesn't make for a good video. <clears throat> um, they are really short. Oh, but uh, did notice a couple things different about them. The quality of the plastics have gotten a lot better since the stuff I used to do when I was a kid. The threads on that, the even the the rod ends here that go on the shaft, they started and went three quarters of the way on just by hand, so you didn't have to sit there and squeeze the rod and, and risk damaging the the actual shaft and the or the piston in the shock, trying to crank the uh, rod end on. So they really nice quality, went right on. I held it for a second, three more turns and it was tight. Um, so yeah, I went ahead and built all four shocks. I just used the stock to me of. Uh, shock fluid that comes with the kit. Nothing, uh, I don't even know what weight this is. Doesn't say on here. It just says a damper oil. So the next step is to throw these on the rear. Um, it's like the uppers just snap onto the balls that we put on the uh, FRP shock tower. And the bottoms, I've got some spacers and some little brass eyelets that go through the bottom of the shock. I've already got all that stuff set out. I'm going to go ahead and do that and then move on to the front and we'll, hopefully we can get this thing all together and rolling uh, in this installment. <laughs> it's been moving pretty quick. I've been pretty happy with the progress so far. And I'm anxious to uh, get to the body part so I've been trying to run through this. Now this is it's to me a kit. So they're, I don't know what it is about them but it's something kind of tranquil. I know I'm not the only one that, that feels that way. They're they're very well laid out, I think. I like the uh, instructions. It just takes me back to when I was a kid. And I was struggling with this kind of stuff because I was a kid. <laughs> so now I'm, you know, used to it. I know how to build those stuff. I've got a much better understanding. A little bit more patience. Just a little bit. But uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put all the shocks on and... We'll see what's next. Alright guys, so you can see back there the shocks are on. Moving on now to the FRP chassis plate. And a couple issues, uh, not really issues, but there's enough plastic on this to not justify any weight savings from the FRP plates. We've got just this first step. I've got this big piece, three little pieces, and then this giant piece. I don't really see the plastic tub that these had was not that heavy really. It was very strong and lightweight the way it was designed, so I don't know. It looks cooler, so we'll just roll with that. Um, let's see. Another thing I've had, I've noticed it once or twice. I thought maybe I just mixed stuff up, but it keeps happening. Some of the stuff is not in the bag. It says it is. These, we've got BD7s, which are long self-tapping, and then it called for two BD8s. Bag D, these were in bag A. <laughs> I'm sorry, it wasn't those, it was the long ones. It says BD3. They were in bag A of my kit for some reason. Um, I was wondering why I had a few pieces of hardware left other than some of the kits usually come with an extra one or two of things, especially like the clips, the Eclipse for the shocks and stuff like that. So I've had a little bit of stuff out of order with the kit. Um, there were the revisions. I'm not going to dig them out of the box right now, but I don't remember it being any hardware. I thought it was all... Uh, I don't even remember what it was. <laughs> so I don't know. That could be the correction for it, but no big deal. It's, you know, we're getting down here. I'm to the last bag of hardware, so it's easy to find what I have left and all that. So um, the FRP plate is beveled cut on one side, so all the screw holes will be, or screws will be flush. We've got the taper head screws. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put all this together. Uh, the step after that, I start on the steering setup, which is notoriously bad on these TAO2s. Very sloppy. It's a very, very crappy design. And the, I remember on the old chassis tubs, they got stripped out easily. The mounts for these pivot points on the on the steering. So I'm hoping there's an improvement on this, since it does look like it has these little aluminum shafts that the steering mounts to. So uh, we'll see that when we get there. I'm gonna go ahead and knock out a step or two, and then we'll pick back up. Alright guys, so I've made the progress on the chassis. I've got all the plastic goods on it. And I've started the steering. 
Now, this is much improved. I found something I was going to show you. I said before the steering on these were notoriously sloppy. So I'm hoping this is much improved. Now it's going to go on something like this. I'm going to put bearings in it and everything. But we've got nice aluminum post. We're going to have ball bearings and we've got this nice solid plastic shaft in between the posts so they all work together. Now the, my original TA-02 had this <laughs> in between these two pieces and that just created a mess of slop. So this already feels a whole lot better. Um, I had some aluminum pieces for this left over from my previous TA-02 but they are shorter than these so I opted not to try that right now. Uh, just another variation on this updated version of the kit, so I'll have to wait and get the newer updated aftermarket part. So the next step is to get our bearings on, put this steering set up on the chassis, and then it looks like we go ahead and mount our gearboxes to the chassis so we kind of have a uh, completed package here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm really anxious to get this thing as a roller so we can see the overall size. It's turned out a lot smaller than I thought it would be. Um, I was talking with someone in the comments on the previous build video. This is not your standard TA-02. This is a fair bit smaller. It is still the, the short wheelbase and it is the wide uh, platform. It's wider. It's the 200 millimeter width, but it's not the, the body itself is almost like an M chassis, like a like a Mini Cooper size, and it's just got big flared fenders. So <laughs> it's a very different setup, and it's, it's very neat. The the TA02 short wide that comes with the 911 body, the white body, as shown on the box, that is the same size as the old uh, Tasian Star Card original TA02 short wheelbase. But this body is actually smaller, so. Um, be interested to see those side by side since I never had the original short wheel base, but this is the one we got. I bought this one because of all the upgrades and stuff, so anyway, like I said, I'm going to get the steering in and get the chassis put together and we can get a better look at this whole thing. Alright guys, so still a ton of parts left, but I'm to the point where the, I'm supposed to build the tires and wheels, so I'm going to stop there. I don't have body mounts. I don't have the battery straps on the side. Um, I still don't know what ESC I'm going to use. I uh, use this servo. It's an old high-tech, high-torque, metal gear servo. It's, it's decent. It's not lightning fast, but I had it. And uh, it's the only one I had that wasn't a crawler servo. So I went with that. Um, I had these aluminum servo mounts, the blue ones here that I had bought from my previous TA-02, so I went ahead and used those. Um, I had to readjust all the steering links. Lengths, they were all off a little bit. Um, I don't have the tires on, they're just sitting on there for looks right now. really wish I had another TA-02 to show you the size. This thing is tiny. This is, is just barely any longer than an M-Series chassis. So, uh, it's, it's really small. I mean, it's really cool. I like it. Um, I always had a had a, a thing for the uh, M chassis cars, and I always hated how how much plastic they were. And the M05 I, I had last was terrible. It was just like the TL01. It's just like two clamshell pieces of plastic, and it was terrible when you wanted to change out gears or add hop up stuff. It was just a nightmare to try to take apart. It just wasn't to the level that the the full size touring cars are at. Um, I am interested in that, I think it's a TA-05 Mini that they have. That that might be something fun to do. But uh, I don't know, we'll see how Paint and Lexan goes. Um, so yeah, there's still a little bit left in the instructions. Uh, I've got some more plastic to add. This thing is really nice. This is way, way more improved. Way improved over the original TA-02. And uh, I'm digging it. I always wanted the FRP chassis and it's just... It's just sweet. And we've got the uh, hardened steel drive shaft, which is tiny in diameter compared to the um, original one. 
and uh, most of the aftermarket ones are big giant fat aluminum like something you'd have on a, a TT-01. I remember my original TA-02, I had upgraded, I got, my sister bought me that one-way diff for Christmas and a carbon fiber drive shaft, which I thought was the coolest thing in the world. But it didn't work well with the plastic tub chassis, so I think there was a little plastic tab up here on the front or back here at the back, I can't remember. <laughs> After driving it like an entire summer, it sawed the carbon fiber in half broke so I ended up going back to the uh, little steel wire that's what it was the stock T TA 02s had the uh, this the steel wire with the rounded edges very very brittle you could see it flex just open throttle without the tires on the ground <laughs> so uh, yeah like I said before in the previous video I've got my M series I don't know, my M series my HPI cup racer wheels these are these are more like a 1.7 I know that people were showing some concern because I said they were they were like a 155. They're really closer to a 17. Um, it's kind of an odd thing HPI did just to differentiate themselves from the Tamiya M series things when they had their Cup Racer cars. So they uh, they look good. I'm gonna add a little depth to them once we get everything the chassis done and get start working on the body. I'm gonna hit them with some black and try to bring out some of the detail. These original style wheels. I still didn't get my other my uh, offset for the rear, and I didn't gotten my tires yet. So unfortunately, I can't move forward with mocking it up. So we're gonna have to wind this one up here. Oh, and I did go ahead and put my urethane bumper on. That is a vintage part. I think I paid 40 bucks for that or something a couple years ago. So they're just so hard to come by. Um, set this body on here see how we're looking so it looks like to get the ride height I want the smaller tire will help a lot but I'm definitely gonna have to add some camber um, I, I did order those vintage upper adjustable uppers so uh, hopefully I can camber it out a little bit um, the only issue with the HPI drift wheels are they or drift tires they're they're not the uh, beveled type they're just kind of a rounded they look like a slick so um the car will set a little higher than i want until they are broken in <laughs> but then this thing is looking cool um i did want to show a couple things i've i don't think i've been able to explain properly how small this body is how small this setup is this is not your standard ta02 this is not standard size of anything so I'm gonna show you next to some other bodies so you can kinda get a, a feel for just how small this thing really is alright so here it is kind of next to the the RC 4 drive K5 Blazer um, it's really not a good comparison because you're comparing a full-size truck to a compact sports car but um, I had somebody ask what what it looked like next to a Trailfinder 2 so let me Bring down my Hilux. It'll be a little bit easier to compare than just to a body. Oh, here we go. So you can see it's it's pretty close to accurately sized. Uh, I'm not sure how it fits with my hot rods. I I can't say I've ever seen a Chop 31 pickup next to a <laughs> 70 something Porsche wide body but we'll have to see once we get it painted that's it's all about perspective um, again these tires that I have on there are just uh, some old 1.9's I had with some off-brand China tires that threw on there for for grins at the moment um, nothing set in stone like I said I've got my my Porsche wheels so I hope that answers some of the questions though. Let me put all this back up here and we'll wrap this one up. Alright guys, so I did end up having room for my urethane bumper. I have plenty of room up front actually. There's still a little bit of space. Um, the only problem with this chassis that I, that I see so far is there are no other body options for it. It's such an odd size. You might, I don't, I don't know what the wheelbase is on like a the M chassis long, like the the newer Mini Cooper bodies, not the vintage one. 
Um, but those are, you know, who wants to have a BMW Mini Cooper? <laughs> it's just aren't uh, aren't that cool to me. But Porsche is pretty cool. I I like it better that it's an older Porsche. It's not the '90s style or even late '90s, early 2000s Porsches were kind of boring to me. Some of the new stuffs interesting but the the vintage Porsches like this were, were pretty snazzy I like I like the idea of it it's pretty basic they're just the Volkswagen with a, a better engine and a better looking body but uh it's a uh, I really dig the chassis I, I love how it's looking so far um I'm trying to think is there any other questions that I didn't answer I'm probably just going to keep with a basic setup with this. I've got the can motor. I've got a, a mediocre servo. I'll probably try to find me a just a cheap ESC to run for now. And I will run this with my Spectrum uh, radio. Um, I'll probably run 5,000 milliamp stick packs. I don't still don't run lipos. I just don't see a need for it. I saw another... Uh, Posting on Facebook the other day, somebody's burnt down their their little workshop. And they had all their RC cars because of lipos. And I, the main reason I, I know that they're easy to do and you can put them in uh, storage mode and stuff like that, but I'm not. I hate the electronic side of of the hobby. I'm I'm all about the mechanics. I like the chassis. I like metal. I like the the carbons and the FRP and. I just like working with suspensions and stuff like that, and that's that carries through to my interest in real cars. I used to do car stereos and stuff in high school, and you know, TVs and all that junk. But the the real part that really I really enjoy is the suspension, and the frame, and fabrication and stuff like that, and that carries through to the hobby for me. So um, one thing I'm not sure about yet. Am I going to try to find a stealth body mount setup, or am I going to go ahead and drill holes for the post? I hate that. I, I really want to make this body. I'm planning on painting it on the outside. I really want to make it look scale, as scale as I can. I, I suck at Lexan, so I'm going to try a different technique, see if I can't uh, make something a little bit better than my norm. <laughs> so I, I, don't know, I, I don't know anything about the stealth mounts. I found some really cheap ones on eBay, but I don't I don't know how you attach the magnets to the body. I don't know if there's just you just glue it or is there some type of process to it. So any any information y'all could share with me, I'd greatly appreciate. Um, I'm pretty heavy with the ride height. I I really thought the most TAO2s the last couple I've built were they just stood up really really high, and uh, this thing is. Is dragging the ground. It had me put two spacers in the uh, inside the shock body, and it's got little short springs. The the shocks are almost the length of a uh, of an M series. And I have these a little bit nicer. I think they're HPI shocks. I was gonna swap them out, but they're almost probably eight or ten millimeters longer. So that was out of the question because I want I want it low. Um. A couple other things I did want to tell you. The it does come with other parts, like this parts tree right here. This has different front control arms that are much narrower. And like I was saying, uh, somebody commented. I kept calling this the short wide, and they they said it's a short wheelbase. So it is a short wheelbase, but it is also the wide platform. The TAO2 <clears throat> comes in a narrow 190 millimeter width and a wide. A 200 millimeter width and this is the short wheelbase with the wide control arms um, I can't change out the control arms because I don't have the dog bones the right length this does that is something that doesn't include but as far as the plastic stuff goes I've got narrow control arms and narrow upper links as well so I did only order a set of two adjustable uppers so that may be uh, an option. I can swap these out on the front to get my camber that I want. My negative camber. Um, I think I have... There's two of those. I think there's some for the back as well. I had another perch tree, I thought. Maybe not. Yeah, it doesn't appear I did. I think I have one in a box, though. So. <laughs> I 
I've got a box of 20 year old TAO2 parts, so who knows what I can find. I've probably got adjustable links in there already. I just have to go through it. Actually, I actually have two boxes of that stuff. But uh, anyway, guys, this is where I'm going to leave you. I'm going to quit rambling on. I just get excited about Tamiya stuff. That, this chassis is really pretty cool to me. And I'm excited to uh, see what we can make out of it. I know there's a lot of folks out there that Tamiya's have a special place in their heart. Uh, my friend Richard Cook, he's he's all about Tamiya's too. We grew up, both grew up kind of the same with the same RC history. We were buying cheap Tamiya, dreaming of the expensive Tamiya's. <laughs> so, anyways, I uh, appreciate you guys watching, and I will see y'all in the next video.